Kiss me if I'm wrong, but dinosaurs still exist, right? Ayo, let's go. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode number two of Life in the Fat Lane. My name is Zach. I am your host. And I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to be bringing you yet another episode of Life in the Fat Lane. Um, so, first order of business. Thank you so much for the warm reception on episode number one. Uh, for those who have subscribed to the show, um, if you haven't done that and you're listening for the first time, please go ahead and do that. That would be amazing. But to those of you who have come from my YouTube channel to the podcast to check it out and to be a part of this, Welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. To my friends and family who have uh, shared this podcast and listened to it and everything, thank you for that. I really appreciate that as well. Um, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for all of you guys. So thank you so much. Um, next, I want to remind all of you to head on over to the socials, social media, Instagram and Twitter. You can find me at Beefy Smalls, B E E F I E. S-M-A-L-L-S, Beefy Smalls, y'all. Um, follow me on there. That's the best place that we're going to be able to communicate. Um, on Instagram, if you follow me, you can DM me. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for the channel, for the show, please do so. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so in today's episode, it's kind of a little controversial one. Yep. So I don't know if you've seen the news or if you know anything about medications uh, weight loss and diabetic medications. But today we are talking about the battle between diabetes and weight loss. We've got medications out there that were made for one, but work for the other, and now we've got shortages. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, what else are we going to talk about today? I would like to also talk about uh, my weight and my weight loss journey. So we're going to take a deep dive into that because eventually, every week, I'd like to talk about the progress I've made, what I've done, uh, the good, bad, and the ugly. So to do that, we just need to give you, get you up to speed. Where are we? So with that being said, today's topic, tug of war between diabetes and weight loss medications. Like I said, it was a little controversial um, because, yeah, there is a shortage going on right now of type 2 diabetes medications like Trulicity. Munjaro and Ozempic. The controversy is the fact that the medications are now also being prescribed for patients that are looking to lose weight. Especially Ozempic. That's where the where it kind of started. Because it contains the same active ingredient that is found in the weight loss medication Wigovi. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But they are essentially the same medication. Just Wigovi has a higher dosage of that medication. Um, so yeah. Uh, but what we're seeing is a lot of celebrities uh, have been out there recently saying that they've been using this medication for weight loss. So, of course, popularity explodes. People want this. What's this magic drug? What are people doing? So they're getting prescribed Wigovi. It gets a shortage, and that just causes a ripple effect, okay? So Wigovi is seeing those spikes. They get shorted. People start getting prescribed Ozempic. Now, Ozempic is a drug that's mainly used by diabetics to help with their A1C levels, to keep their blood sugars low. It's primarily used instead of insulin. So instead of a daily insulin, you're taking once a week Ozempic to do the job of what the insulin was doing. The Ozempic shortages are because of the Wigovi shortages, so then people start doing that. Well, now that Ozempic is suffering shortages, that's where now you're seeing Trulicity and Munjaro being shorted because providers have to have something to give their patients that need this medication to keep their blood sugars regulated to keep them from having all these other medical issues. And now we're seeing a supply shortage of Trulicity and Munjaro as well. It's kind of crazy to think, you know, like all this happening so quick uh, you think, well, just manufacture more. Well, that'd be great 
to just be able to do at the drop of a hat. But they're working on it. Um, from what I understand, uh, what I was reading is a lot of the shortages should be over by March of this year. By the end of March of this year, you should start seeing uh, a recovery in the supply. So if you're in need of these medications, you're not traveling all over the country to try to find a supply so you can live. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what about just going back on insulin if, if that's the case? Well, I'm sure there are people that have had to do that because of the shortages. But one thing you've got to look into, too, is you can't just stop these medications. You have to kind of taper down on these medications and then get off of them. And then what happens when the shortage is over and now you're going back onto them? There's so many side effects that could come with these medications that are just, you know, they're not going to necessarily kill you. Well, I shouldn't say they shouldn't because, I mean, they might to some. But it is quite hard for some people to deal with, you know, any stomach cramps or the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea that comes with some of them. And I'm going to tell you, I'm lucky. I don't have a lot of those side effects with those medications. My body doesn't completely give up on me now, uh, so I can handle the change pretty good, thankfully. Um, but in this debate right now between the two, I'm kind of stuck in the middle. And so are many other people. So, Because I am both overweight and I'm diabetic. I am prescribed Trulicity for my diabetes. I was taken off my insulin, my daily insulin, a little less than a year ago to be on this once a week shot. Let me tell you, best thing ever. It's so nice to have to deal with it only once a week than every day. Because poking yourself every day is not ideal. Like it's... I guess it's one way of reminding yourself every day why you're trying to get healthy, why you're trying to get down, you know, in the weight and everything. It, it, it kind of it works well that way. But honestly, just remembering to do it, the pain of doing it, um, added on top of the other pains you're dealing with. It's kind of nice to only have one shot a week. Now, I'm due for a refill on my prescription, but I won't be able to get it probably for a few weeks yet because of the shortage. But luckily I have enough to last me until until they should be back in stock. I'm one of the lucky ones. Uh, but the overweight side of me thinks it's great that we found this medication that is helping with weight loss. The but diabetic side of me is happy that I don't have to give myself a shot every day, like I said. But I'm not too thrilled that I may not get my medication, which I need pretty much to survive to keep me from having all these other medical conditions, um, to keep me from uh, essentially dying because my blood sugar is too high or what not. Because my body doesn't know how to regulate that stuff right now. Me personally, I've done too much damage to my body. So who's at fault, really, with the shortage? Is it those getting the prescription for weight loss or is it those switching from insulin to a more convenient once a week option? Honestly, I put the blame on both both sides. I have a friend of mine who is just absolutely livid that she's having a hard time getting her medications for her diabetes because people are getting it just to lose 10, 15 pounds that are otherwise perfectly healthy. Now, granted... That's a small number of the overall amount of people that are getting medications for the weight loss, but it is occurring because you have those people that, that can still get this medication. Uh, maybe they even are celebrities who are able to get this medication before people at a regular pharmacy, which is part of the problem. They don't need it. They're already fit. They're just looking for a quick answer to drop that last little bit of weight. So I see where she's coming from and why she's upset. But I also see the side of if this medication is helping people lose weight that otherwise are struggling really hard to and may potentially die because of the issues their weight is causing, then I can't be mad at that. We just It's all supply and demand. There is the demand for this medication, and it looks like those companies are doing everything they can to increase the supply. Not to help us, mind you, I'm sure. 
Obviously, they're doing it because they know they can make more money of it. But so be it. If that's what it needs to take to get them to make more so we are you know, fully stocked and able to get prescription refills when we need it, then by all means, let's let it happen. So my ultimate thoughts on this, and I'd love to hear yours. On this episode's post on my Instagram, at BV Smalls, I will have a post, an episode two post. In the comments, I want to hear your opinion, if you have any, on either on either side or neutral, whatever, whatever you think. I want to hear that. I want to know what you're thinking. But my thoughts are that I would hope that providers aren't prescribing medications to those that aren't, that it isn't necessary for. If you have a patient who is looking to lose the 10 pounds for cosmetic reasons, sorry, but you're just going to have to wait because we can't justify prescribing this to you at this time. Another thing that is so irritating is that you can find online celebrities who are touting this medication for helping them stay in shape and looking their best. People who already have all the tools necessary to get the results they're looking for without medication. These people influence all these, uh, these people influence everybody into thinking that this is the right step for them and ultimately running into shortages. It's, I mean, I've been repeating myself a couple of times, but that's, that's the reality. Us regular folk like me and you are having to travel to several different pharmacies sometimes in hopes that the medication they need can be found. If you're following this and you need these medications, maybe then you need to try planning ahead knowing, okay, I'm going to be out in two weeks, three weeks. Let me start now finding yeah, we shouldn't have to do that, but that's just the reality of things, and here we are. I feel like it should be given to those that are in need of medication first. Those who need the medication to survive, essentially. Um, and like I did mention before, we can't just simply switch people from one medication to another type uh, without expecting a lot of side effects and issues from changing so quickly. So we want to try to avoid that. And I think we can, I think, I think we'll be okay. It's just going to take a couple of weeks from what it sounds. Once again, head over to my Instagram at beefy smalls and tell me what your thoughts are. In the end, it looks like I came out kind of neutral. I just want everybody to be able to get the things that they need. And then ultimately the things that they want. But we just got to be smart about it. The providers got to think about what they're doing. Granted, they don't know everything. Like they they don't know all the prescriptions that are out there, you know. But but they can see that there's a shortage, and if somebody's coming in not really needing this medication, maybe not uh, prescribe it right away. All right. So that's all I'm going to say about that topic today. Maybe it'll come up. Um, if we have a little discussion on the internet, on socials, then we can bring it up in a future episode just to see what people are saying and everything. That'd be great. But I want to switch gears now and talk about my weight loss journey, my weight, where we are and all that. So, um, yeah, let's do that. All right. So each week we're going to take a few minutes to talk about my weight loss, the good, the bad, and the ugly of it all, honestly. So before we start talking about the progress I've made each week, let's talk a little bit about where I was and where we are now. The truth is, I don't know what my heaviest weight ever was. Um, There were a few years where I feel like I was bigger than I was when I really started focusing on getting healthier. Like I said, I, I had no clue and I was terrified to find out. But since we didn't know and we don't know what my heaviest was, we're just gonna have to start with the number that we do know. And we found that number out when I purchased the scale that I did that would read at least 500 pounds because I thought for sure there was no way that I was bigger than that. No possible way. I prayed that it was going to work for me and that I didn't weigh any more than that because how could I? I mean, I know I'm big, but I can't shop for clothes in a regular store, but I surely don't weigh more than 500 pounds, right? So I got the scale set up and I stepped on the scale and number popped up 498. First, I had a sigh of relief because that number was below 500. 
But then second was a sigh because, damn, how did I get so big? I weighed well over the average weight of two men my age. So a quick recap of growing up. I was a military kid who lived all over the world, and I loved food. Let's be honest. Naturally, when I needed comfort from the stresses of being the new kid everywhere we'd move, or from trying to make new friends, food was always there, and it always made me feel good. If only I had found music first. But I didn't. I found peanut butter. And crackers. And everything else. But my school-aged years and on, from my school... Yeah, okay, let's try that again. From my school-aged years and on, I steadily gained weight. Um, I would oftentimes sneak food after school, late at night, eating large portions at mealtimes. I mean, I gained weight steadily despite playing sports and being very active. I did find joy in video games once those came out. Long before online gaming was a thing, so it was just me in my room... With my snacks. Um, besides that, I played tennis in high school. And I was very good for the fat kid. To give you an idea, I played number one varsity doubles my freshman year through my junior year of high school. And then my senior year, my doubles partner and I were team captains, but we split up to play singles. I was number one singles, the top seeded singles on our team, and a team captain for crying out loud. Imagine being the fat kid, but being a team captain and the best player on the team. Every match they'd announce the players and I'd be going against, you know, I'd be going up against the super fit six foot two kid. And then there's me, the five foot ten, three hundred pound kid. You could always see it in their eyes too. They'd take me for granted before the match even started. The whole other team would snicker. They'd laugh. But I wasn't kidding when I said I was good. I was I never made it to state, but I was close. We ended our senior year playing number one doubles again, just kind of a last like like a retirement parade, you know, like when the athletes have, oh, farewell tour, like when they have their farewell, farewell tour, that was kind of us, our senior year. I was bragging a little bit, but honestly, like, I, I wasn't good enough to win state, but I was good, especially being a fat kid, like I was good, and I loved the sport. We'd go out and play eight hours a day if we could, and I was still fat, still overweight. Still gaining weight. That just tells you how bad my eating habits really were. And I was the kid saying, well, I don't eat that much. No, it's not that bad. But who'd have thought that it was that bad? I was trying to kill myself with food without even knowing it. Because it made me feel good. It was an addiction. I'm, an, I'm addicted to food. I spent 19 years working for Walmart. I started at the age of 16. I walked an average of 6 to 10 miles every day at work, but I was still gaining weight. Just like tennis, still gaining weight. Imagine what I had to have been eating daily for that to happen. Oh, oh it scares me just to think about. But let's fast forward now a little bit. Life has happened and one day I woke up at 498 pounds in a hospital bed, finding out that I was diabetic. I needed to make changes, and, and I did. It's been full of ups and downs and stopping and starting and stopping and starting. I'm sure you've been there if you're trying to lose weight, and you can relate to what I'm saying. But I ended up in that hospital because my blood sugar was well over 1,000. I couldn't see anything, and I have, I have perfect vision. But my vision was blurry. I couldn't read signs at Walmart because I was so sick. There was a male nurse that come in to talk to me one night while I was in the hospital. I was there for four days. They were working on getting my, my blood sugar down, and then I had cellulitis in my leg that we were trying to treat because of my high blood sugars. But I had a guy come in, and he sat down next to me. We were talking. He said, hey, I was a lot like you. He goes, when I found out that I was diabetic, when I decided to make a change, he had gone into the hospital. His blood sugar was well over 900, so close to mine. And he goes, he's going to be honest. He's like, I should have been dead. But his weight saved him 
the only reason I probably ever was able to get that high of a blood sugar and survive was because of the weight that was eating up this sugar, you know? So what I decided to do after that is I decided to find something that would work for me as far as eating habits. I did meet with a dietitian and a diabetic educator. And we talked about, you know, options. And I ended up choosing to do a ketogenic diet. And lo and behold, it worked wonders. I lost 70 pounds doing keto. My A1C dropped from over 10 down to 5.8. Wow. I did, how, what, what great work. It felt so good. I was doing so well. But life happens, man. You start to learn when you're an addict, you learn the things that you can do to kind of cheat the system. So every, I would eat a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, the insulin's helping though, keeping my blood sugar pretty low. Kind of like flying under the radar. But when you keep flying under the radar, eventually you're going to run out of gas. And that plane's going to either, you're going to have to either land it or it's going to crash. And I crashed. I ended up gaining all my weight back. And it's not because keto was too hard for me. It's because I'm lazy and I'm addicted to food. When I meal prep and I'm ready for the week, man, I, I'm lazy enough that I'll eat whatever it is I already made rather than getting something else. So if I fail to prepare, I fail to, to continue on. But the next thing I had to do, I had to change it up again. I had to find something else that was going to help me. I went on a trip with my dad to Colorado. And that's when I decided I wanted to start a YouTube channel. Actually, I started to think about a podcast first. But then I saw that it had cost some money to host it. And, and I wasn't quite sure how to do it. And... Well, hell, if I'm going to do something, I might as well do something for free. And that's where YouTube came in, and I loved it. I enjoyed it. And for a while, I was doing so good. I was making progress. And then every video, I was starting to say the same things over and over again. Oh, I gained a pound, gained two pounds. Oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And then I was like, man, these people don't want to hear how bad I'm failing, even though that's literally the point of the show. Same as this, like I made the show because I want people to see how it actually is. It's not a perfect linear down, like, oh, oh, I'm losing weight. Guess what? I'm just perfect and I'm going to lose it all. First try, boom. But I made, the smart, I made the decision for myself. I made a smart decision to take a step back from the channel because I found myself focused more on making videos than producing results. So I took a step back, and in 2022, I didn't make a single video. I just decided to do better. I didn't put any unrealistic expectations on myself. I didn't even weigh myself for the longest time. I just wanted to feel better. I wanted my clothes to fit better. And lo and behold, I lost almost 50 pounds in 2022. Because my brain wasn't so fixated on the problem, I allowed myself to just live life and do the things I love. Try to make smarter choices when it comes to what I'm eating and drinking. It wasn't perfect. By any means, not perfect. I had my binge moments. More than I'd like to admit. But the results were still there because I was consistently making the changes, making the right choices, not letting the bad choices, not letting any mistakes take me down and keep me down. So that's great. I mean, we started off this year with a bang. Like, yes, let's go. We can do this. 
And then I kind of made a, a little video, a YouTube video saying, I was coming back. We're going to bring life in the fat lanes coming back. But my heart wasn't there on YouTube anymore. And I've, like I said, I've been thinking about doing this podcast for years. And I said, now's the time. I feel good. I look good. Now's the time. So that's why we're here. So each week, obviously it's not going to be long and drawn out like this one. I just want to kind of give you an idea of how we got to where we are. So remember, I started out at 498. 498. The last weigh-in that I had, we're going to bring that up here. Let me do, 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 pardon me, I got to find it on my phone. The last weigh-in, 442.4, 55.6 pounds total so far. And we're not even, I haven't even been to the gym this year yet. I haven't done anything extra. It's just focusing on what I'm eating, making the right choices. If I make the bad choice, start over again with the very next meal that you're having. Don't think about food 24-7. That's a problem too. Even though I'm planning to make the right choices, if my brain is on it the whole time, then that's all I'm thinking about. That's all I'm obsessing about. We're in it. 2023. 2023. It's going to be the best year yet. And I'm loving it. 55.6 pounds. Yes. Bring it on. All right. So this is where I'm leaving you guys today. This is where I'm leaving you. On a positive note, 55 pounds. Almost 56. We're almost at that 60 point, blah, blah, blah. the 60 pound benchmark. I'm going in 10, 10 pound increments. Boom, goal, hit, mark it, gone. Thank you so much for being here for episode two. Like I said in the parts of this episode, head on over to social media Instagram, Twitter, at Beefy Smalls. My name is Zach. And this is Life in the Fat Lane.